But don't also do the other thing. You know what most of our cultures do? Is that they do a 10 minute sitting. 10 minute sitting. So basically, they'll, they'll basically buy the sari or they'll buy some good nice shalwar kameez and they'll go all the way with a hundred pounds worth of ambala. Uh, how many people in the house? Four. Uh, how many days will it take them to eat this? Four hundred. They'll probably die of diabetes by the time they finish it. Why are you buying it? Oh, <laughs> my, 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 my dignity, my pride. <laughs> so anyway, put that aside. They've started off on the wrong foot. They've started off on the wrong foot. You don't buy a hundred pounds of laddu, my friend. Because you'd be a daddu if you do that. So you've done that, you've gone there, you've wasted a hundred pounds. They're going, they're going to throw in the, part of it in the bin. It's going to go in the bin because they won't be able to distribute it amongst even the family. It's part of it's going to go in the bin. It happens. It happens. And don't tell me it doesn't happen. Now, they've started off, they'll bring all this thing and then, yes, and it'll all be formal and you sit down there and, you know, it's like, <clears throat> you know, I'm the, who's the big man here? And they have some kind of guy called the wakil or the ukil. Right? This is the Asian typical way of most of them looking for a marriage. So some guy's going to be the mediator in between the middle or the one who's been the representative. So, um, you okay, yes, he'll give you a cup of tea and give all the food and they'll cook you seven curries and whatever else it is. And then after all of that, when they've had the chat, the main chat is between the two families. So the two families are trying to get to know one another about the bride and about the groom or the proposed bride and groom. But the actual bride and groom, they leave them in the room or they get them just to see each other for no more than about 10 minutes. Put your hands up if I'm telling you the right thing. Put your hands up. Yep. <coughs> Anyone else know anything different from you? Maybe half an hour. Maybe one hour, right? Now you tell me guys, yeah, you tell me this. Yeah. It's a serious relationship. You cannot take this woman and dump her tomorrow. You can't take this man and complain to your father tomorrow and say, I don't want to be with him. When we have an interview, right? You know, when, you, when, you want, when you've got a big company, serious company, that's going to make a chief executive in their place. Are they going to see the guy for 10 minutes? Tell me, give me an answer. Are they going to see him for 10 minutes? No. Are they going to just look at his face and say, Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Please talk. Six minutes left. <laughs> and by the time she's opened her mouth, it's over. And he's going to judge her by what? Her face. Just her face. And he, she's going to judge him by his face. Absolutely awful. I don't care how many people have accepted this and done this. It's wrong. Okay, fine, certain cultures, they might do it, and I'm not going to look. I'm not going to sit here and start giving you photos about other cultures there. But here in England, the amount of marriages that are in problems, because, the, you know, the first thing that went wrong is the way they met each other. They never got a chance to know each other. There's nothing wrong in getting to know your wife through a mahram. So basically, for you to go to that house, for you to sit down, for you to then get to actually talk to her properly, she talks to you properly, with the presence of a blood related person to her who will stop loose talk okay so it's got to be an elder brother of hers it's got to be or someone who's a brother that will stop loose talk or a father or someone who will stop the loose talk so he will be too embarrassed to say something wrong in front of her right if that happens then he can have as many sessions as he wants and she can have as many sessions and there needs to be certain things that they need to start asking <coughs> they must do this come on ask about ambitions ask about what you want to do in life ask about you know how you how you want to live together ask about what character it is that you got to go, you got to know about because if you don't find about this thing what do you want to do wake up tomorrow and start to find out that the beast inside this beautiful woman that she basically is, is sleeping through the whole of Fajr and you're basically trying to wake her up but you're still there till what? And you wanted your parata in the morning and you basically got some baked beans in the afternoon? <laughs> right? I mean, come on! Let's, let's face it, if you, if you really want your parata, if you really fussed about your breakfast, there's some men are fussed about their food. Some women are fussed about their luxuries. Let's, let's put it straight. If you're fussed about something, bring it up in the first instance. 
If you're not fussed about it, say, I'm not fussed about this. But if you really, you know, some, some men, they may say they don't like a woman because of a simple thing. And some woman, woman might say that. And if it's because of that, please explore these things in a mutual agreement with the mahram there. I'm not saying without the mahram. Don't go to the other extreme. They're the extreme of, you know, uh, going there and somehow to get her phone number off her. Somehow to get his number off him. Right? And then what's the next step? The next step is, you know, take the phone out and... No one see me. I just text her what I want. Facebook. I can see her. I can follow her. And some of this, you know, I've, I've come across some of this. I'm telling you right now, the dangerous thing that you can do is that when there's a boy and a girl and they're trying to get to know each other, whether it's from the day number one, or whether it's in between somewhere while the talks are going on, or whether it's near the end when they've just said, okay, we're, we're now saying that they're, you know, they're, they're serious about the actual, um, you know, marriage. Whatever the case is, as soon as they start exchanging numbers before marriage, the one in between them is shaitan. Hadith of Abu Dawood, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يخلو رجل بمرأة إلا الشيطان ثالثهما Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No man will get together in secrecy with another woman except that the third will be the shaitan amongst them. So he'll start very innocently, emails and whatever. You'll start very easy and I just want to get to know you a bit more. Oh yeah, I'd like to get to know you a bit more. Are you practicing sister? Yes. Are you practicing brother? Yes. And then it carries on. Next minute you know the guy's heart is pounding boom, boom, boom. And she's doing the same thing. She can't sleep at night. You know. And the basically is texting you until one o'clock in the morning. You know, emailing each other, Facebook, whatever. You know, they're just in love and they're, you know, all that. Too many, too many. And what's between them? The shaitan. The shaitan is between them.